to have total transparency as we stand before you today, you will know what we know as, it, as we learn it. I want to speak to our diverse community. Every place of worship is important to the law enforcement community that stands behind me. Whether it's our churches, our synagogues, our mosques, our temples, we are going to provide you protection. We're increasing security. Won't discuss publicly all provisions, but we're gonna continue to make public safety our highest priority. I would also like to emphasize we need to continue to be aware of mental health issues in our community. Indications that mental health played a role in an early investigation. Want to also ask the public not only keep the victims in their prayers, the suspect's family in our prayers, there was a lot of pain exhibited yesterday and being felt today. I want you to pray for the first responders. The two gentlemen that neutralized the suspect yesterday, a TABC officer and an HPD officer, did not go to work yesterday morning planning to have to use their weapons. They're suffering today. They need our prayers and our counseling. And in closing, let me thank the men and women of every agency that's represented up here today and some are out in the field. I speak quite often about collaboration of our law enforcement agencies in our community. I want the public to know, I want Houstonians to know that we have every level of government represented here today, led by our fine, outstanding Chief Fenner. The scene yesterday was hectic, but people came together, agencies, all the agencies representing law enforcement in our community at the state level and at the federal level. It's an ongoing investigation, but that's the way cooperation is supposed to work. And to the Houston community, we feel as we stand before you today, the community's unity. That's what great communities do. We don't start pointing fingers. We don't worry about who's gonna get credit for work. We come together. This is a great community, great people, but with the first responders that showed up at the scene and have worked all night long and have an ongoing investigation. Let's keep our first responders. We want to assure Reverend Osteen's church that we understand the trauma that they went through to those families. We want them to understand Everybody was doing everything they could on the scene yesterday. The reunification of the families. We had families separated from their children. So this is what collaboration and unity and dedication to public safety provides. Let's continue to support the first responders. We'll be very transparent as we go forward. And with that message, I would like to yield to Chief Finner. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want to first uh, thank uh, all of uh, my colleagues, uh, and that includes all the men and women on the front line. The mayor hit some points of the collaboration and, and the difficulty in, in the scene uh, yesterday, but very proud of, of everybody who uh, showed up and um, we got everything un under control. Um, I, I want to uh, ask for prayers for a seven-year-old uh, kid who's fighting for his life. Um, and, and questions came up yesterday uh, about him. And I, I think that what we need to do for him is, is pray. Um, he's still in critical condition fighting for his life. The last report I got, the 57-year-old male who was uh, shot has been released. Uh, I want to ask for continued prayers for him and his family um, and all families uh, involved. Uh, the Lakewood family, and, and the mayor spoke on it, but I, I spoke to... Uh, Pastor Osteen this morning, um, and he would have been here. But his duty, his heart is, is with his congregation right now, trying to start the healing process. And we want to pray for them uh, in our entire community. Um, but as I said yesterday, I'll say it again. Uh, we go through tragic moments, uh, but 
we're going to stand up as Houstonians, uh, as, as like we always do with any tragedy. Uh, but we wanted to uh, come here and provide an update on, um, on the incident of yesterday. Uh, and I just want to go over a few things, um, a few individuals who are here. Um, Mayor Whitmire already spoke. Um, I, I'm speaking, and uh, Chief Pena will speak. Um, uh, the uh, FBI SAC, uh, Douglas Williams, will say a few words. Uh, TABC Director uh, Kevin Lilly will make some remarks. Um, the update on the actual investigation is going to come from our commander of a homicide, uh, Hasek. Um, we're going to follow up in Spanish um, with Commander Hector Garcia would probably just summarize every, everything that uh, everybody's saying up here uh, briefly. Um, and then we'll go to uh, question and answers. Also, I want to acknowledge um, the director of uh, DPS, Gerald Brown, is here. Thank you. And also Harris County uh, Sheriff Ed Gonzalez. And our district attorney, uh, Kim Ogg, is, is here as well. And if I've missed out on somebody, uh, you let me know. But um, a lot of work has been conducted um, and just in, uh, since yesterday. And a lot of things are still going on. We will not be able to answer it eat every question, um, information that we do have. Uh, we'll share it with you if we, if we can, but um, uh, let's uh, just take that into consideration. Um, also, want to close out by saying um, it's important, as the mayor said, that our community, and not only religious institutions, all of our communities, we need to hold one another up in this moment, in any other moment. We need to watch out for one another. And you'll see us out there, more visible presence. But behind those visible uh, presence are true relationships where we communicate every day uh, with everybody in our community that we possibly can. Um, and we'll continue to, to do that. Um, I'm going to step aside uh, briefly and uh, bring up uh, Chief uh, Sam Pena. Thank you, Troy. And thank you, Mayor, for uh, bringing uh, this group together. I want to first extend my gratitude as well to all the uh, agencies that, were, that participated in this incident, uh, the ones that we collaborate on a day-to-day -day basis, because, uh, again, it's, not, it's, it's about those relationships that are built ahead of time that uh, ensures an efficient response to these types of incidents when, when needed. Also, uh, again, our prayers to the young child that, that was injured, uh, our community, uh, that that is suffering is traumatic for our community as well when these incidents happen. So, but uh, the purpose uh, of my briefing here today is just to allay some of the fears that may uh, be out there in regards to any possible exposure to chemicals that uh, may or may not have been present at the at the scene. As we mentioned yesterday, in collaboration with the Houston Police Department's bomb squad, our hazmat task force and decontamination task force were on scene, <clears throat> conducting tests on any of the products that may have been at the location. The uh, tests were completed, the preliminary uh, uh, tests were completed on scene. I can safely say that there is no risk of exposure to any chemical or product that may have been present to anybody that was at the uh, facility, at the, at the church, any of the first responders, anybody that came in contact or in the general vicinity, and certainly no danger to our community in, in terms of, of any hazmat products. Um, the products on their own are, are benign and they're common products that we would see in, in other applications. So I want to make sure that we communicated that to our community. There was no risk of exposure or, or ill effect or hazard to our community as a result of any product that was out there. And uh, we're going to continue our partnership with uh, law enforcement. Certainly my my partner in public safety, Troy Finner, and his team uh, until we uh, complete this investigation. So thank turn you, it back Chief. to you, Chief. Thank, thank you. Thank you, uh, FBI SAC Special Agent in Charge, uh, Williams. Got you. Thank you, Chief. Got you. Thanks. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. I'd first like to start by thanking all of the partners who are uh, who are here today for a seamless response to the incident uh, yesterday. Good afternoon. My name is Doug Williams. I'm the special agent in charge of the FBI's Houston field office. Unfortunately, we've always said that it's not a matter of if an active shooter event will occur in our city, but when. That win was Sunday afternoon. 
just before a service at one of the largest congregations, not just in Houston or Texas, but in the United States. We are extremely thankful for the quick response of the two officers working security at the church at the time that engaged the shooter. I think all of us here would agree that if it weren't for them, the number of casualties and victims would have been much higher. There is no doubt, there is no doubt that their heroic actions saved lives. The FBI has been assisting our partners at the Houston Police Department with the investigation of the shooting at Lakewood Church since it immediately happened. We'll continue to assist them for as long as needed. The FBI is working with HPD to follow all logical investigative leads related to the shooting. As the chief just said, it's way too early to determine a motive for the shooter's actions, and we're not in the business of speculating. Our work is based on facts and evidence, and we're still in the process of collecting those facts and evidence. That process will take time. It is very common for the FBI to provide support to partner law enforcement agencies during an active shooter incident and in the immediate aftermath of a shooting. The FBI has an arsenal of local and national resources at our disposal that we can deploy. These include technical resources as well as personnel resources such as agents, investigative analysts, evidence response teams, victim service specialists, just to name a few. Yesterday, we deployed all those resources and will continue to support HPD for as long as it's needed. In the meantime, if anyone has information about Sunday's shooting at Lakewood Church that they'd like to share, we'd ask that you please contact the Houston Police Department and share the lead as they are the lead investigative agency. Again, the FBI is assisting and we will continue to assist our partners here for as long as needed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, JBC Director uh, Kevin Lilly. Thanks. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. Um, I'm Kevin Lilly, Chairman of the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission. Um, first, I'd like to offer my sincere condolences to the congregation of Lakewood Church and to Greater Houston. Um, as the Mayor said, our places of worship are both sacred and safe, and um, all Texans grieve what happened at Lakewood Church yesterday. And Indeed, when the sanctity of a church is violated or any house of worship, mm -hmm. that is an attack on the very foundation of this nation. And, um, and so we are so grateful for the action of our Houston police officer involved, as well as TABC agent Adrian Herrera, who were the officers on the scene, uh, and their actions working together to neutralize the suspect as the FBI said saved lives. You know, the term hero has been used today and sometimes it's said flippantly. Uh, but I think what happened yesterday was the personification of heroism and valor um, in which a total disregard for your own safety, saving others before yourself. Um, uh, Chief, I was talking to a couple of your deputy chiefs yesterday as well as some of the FBI agents and they spoke almost in, in, in great respect of the fact that these two officers held their ground. They held their ground in the face of rifle fire at point blank range. And they continued to fire until the, the uh, perpetrator was neutralized and they did not yield. And they remained there as a wall Agent Herrera and the HPD officer involved were a gauntlet. They were a wall that existed between worshipers and terror, between freedom of religion and murder. And we should all be mindful of the sacrifices that our men and women in law enforcement make every day. It is a profession of the highest honor. I just thought this morning that if your son or daughter came into your living room tonight and said, Mom, Dad, I want to be a cop. I want to be in law enforcement. 
You should receive that request with reverence and respect because these individuals place their lives on the line for us. It is an act of service unlike any other. And so I would like to thank Chief Fenner for your excellent, excellent work. I'd also like to thank our mayor. I have known Mayor Whitmire for many years and he and I don't always agree on everything politically. <laughs> And we've been on other sides of the fence. But I will say this, for as long as I've known him, he has always honored and respected law enforcement. Public safety, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the most critical things that we have. And I would say this, to elected officials that want to defund police, to elected officials that want to demonize law enforcement, I say they do so at their own political peril. And so we need to unify as a community to defend our men and women in the thin blue line. So I would just like to thank all of you here and um, to all the brave men and women thank you. who defend our city. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Commander, yes, sir. passing homicide. Good afternoon, I'm Christopher Hassig. Commander, HPD Homicide, also leader of our Special Investigations Unit, last name H-A-S-S-I-G. I just want to talk about the investigative steps, uh, where we're at, what we've accomplished so far, and what we're going to be doing moving forward. All right, uh, please be mindful. We are approximately 24 hours into this investigation. It's very fluid, and the investigators under my Special Investigations Unit have been working around the clock and gathering information this entire time. So Sunday, yesterday, February 11th, uh, at 1353, at 153 p.m., we had an individual pull up in front of Lakewood Church on the west side of the building off of Timmins. She gets out of her white vehicle. She opens the door pulls out the seven-year-old child out of the back seat, as well as uh, a bag that is with her. She goes, she confronts a security guard who lets her in along the west side of the building. At 13.55, pardon me, 1.55 p.m., she immediately starts firing inside of the hallway on the west side of Lakewood Church. She's in the hall, not in the sanctuary. Multiple rounds are fired by her, at which point uh, Officer Moreno of the Houston Police Department, working an approved extra job at the location, as well as TABC Agent Herrera, return fire. And the exchange is all there on the west side of the building, in the hallway. Multiple shots are exchanged by all three. She eventually falls to the ground. The seven-year-old child it falls to the ground as well from gunfire, one uh, gunshot wound to the head. Like has been mentioned earlier today, he is in critical condition at this time. And uh, at 14.07, 2.07 p.m., she is pronounced deceased by Houston Fire Department personnel. Other things that we know at this point in regards to the investigation. Our shooter is identified by a driver's license as Genesee Moreno, 36 years old, Hispanic female. Uh, there are some discrepancies. We do have reports. She used multiple aliases, including Jeffrey Escalante. So she has utilized both male and female names, but through all of our investigation to this point, talking with individuals, interviews, documents, Houston Police Department reports. She has been identified this entire time as female, she, her, and so uh, we are identifying her as Genesee Moreno, Hispanic female. There were two weapons of hers recovered on the scene, an Anderson Manufacturing AR-15, which was what she utilized to fire at the officers. There was a sticker on the buttstock of the rifle that stated Palestine. A sticker simply stated Palestine on the buttstock. 
also within the possession of her, uh, near her, what she brought in according to video and she had in a bag was a 22 caliber rifle by Blue Line Solutions. She had that, she brought that in, she did not fire that weapon. We do have her vehicle, we are in possession of that. We will be processing that and see if there is more evidence. We wanna thank our federal and state partners for their assistance in helping process the scene. We, uh, we have uncovered some items. We do have some anti-Semitic writings that we have uncovered during this process. But like I said, we are 24 hours into it. It is very uh, new. We are getting new information as the uh, hours change. And so we are gonna be delving into that more. But we do wanna stress that she acted alone. We do believe this was what we term a, a, a lone wolf, lone suspect situation. We do not believe this is part of a larger nexus. She is not part of a larger group or set of individuals. We believe that Genesee Moreno acted alone. We do have some facts that she was uh, put under an emergency detention order by Houston police officers, uh, we believe in 2016. Uh, we do believe that she does have a mental health history that is documented through us and through interviews with family members. And we do wanna state that uh, through our investigation, I mentioned anti-Semitic writing. We do believe that there was a f familial dispute that has taken place between uh, her ex-husband and her ex-husband's family. And some of those individuals are, of, uh, are Jewish. So we believe that that is, might, might possibly be where all of this stems from. Uh, we ask anybody with information to please call the Houston Homicide Department, 713-308-3600 or Crime Stoppers at 713-222-TIPS, T-I-P-S, if they have any information regarding Ms. Moreno or anything that could assist us with this investigation.